Okay, a little mystery here for you. Let's see if you can figure it out. I have uh, the large neodymium iron boron here and a uh, precision gyroscope. There are no ferromagnetic parts to this gyroscope. Uh, the chassis is aluminum, the rod is stainless, and the flywheel is brass. So, let's uh, spin it up and see if we could use a gyroscope as a type of gauss meter regarding uh, centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence on the face of this extremely large neodymium iron boron. I uh, placed the uh, marks on the flywheel of the gyroscope on the top of it so you could see it. So first let's place it on the centrifugal edge of the magnet. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Totally stopped about 5,000. It was about totally slowed down at about 4,000. So, uh, on its own, not near this magnet, this gyroscope will spin. I've got Teflon lubrication in the bearings. And it'll spin for about three minutes, roughly, on its own. So here you saw, not touching the center axis, not touching the magnet, just at the centrifugal edge of the magnet, we had about five seconds of spin. So now, let's spin it up to the same RPMs and place it at the centripetal center, and see what happens there. And then let's see if you could figure out what's going on. We'll take it up to the same revolutions on the brass flywheel. I'm sure you can hear it there. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, trying to make perfectly still, 16, 17, 18, still going strong, shouldn't tilt it however, that'll slow it down, 19, 20, 21, 22, you get the point, right? We had 5 seconds before, we're right out of about 30 seconds. Why? I'm still on the face of the magnet. What's the difference here than at the centrifugal edge? You can actually feel the vibrations in the, uh, I keep saying compass, I keep doing these videos really in the morning. The gyroscope, you can still feel, feel the vibrations in the gyroscope and you can get a rough idea of the revolutions. I can feel it, you can't. But that's why I placed the marks on the top of the gyroscope so you can see it's still spinning up at high revolutions. I don't know, about 40 some seconds now. Still going strong. I've obviously tilted it a few times and I can't keep perfectly still, so that's obviously some variation. Still going strong. For the sake of time, let's just quickly place it on the centrifugal edge. And you see we have immediate slowdown. Ta-da. So, what's going on, folks? Now let's try placing it perpendicular or horizontal to the dielectric inertial plane. You think uh, anything will happen different there? Let's spin the gyroscopic flywheel up to the same revolutions. And let's place it perpendicular to the dielectric inertial plane of the magnet. You can actually hear it spin down. About the same thing, about four or five seconds. Totally stopped. Same revolutions. Let's try it, say, let's try to place it uh, in line with the dielectric inertial plane, parallel to it, and let's see what happens then. Okay, parallel to the dielectric inertial plane. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not absolutely parallel to it, but close enough. About ten seconds. Say plus or minus two or three seconds. So, now here's your point. Why will the brass flywheel sit? Now you're going to think, well, this is uh, sitting at... Uh, 
an angle to the uh, the bearings of the compass. Therefore, it's uh, incurring more torsional friction on the bearing. But that's actually not the case. That's not why it spins down in uh, four seconds or five seconds there versus spinning here for, you know, I had to stop it early for the sake of time. So, what's going on? Have you figured it out yet? Let's see. Let's try one more thing. Remember, as I said, there's only two principles in the universe, force and motion, and inertia and acceleration. All atoms are polarized definitionally. How they are polarized, either complex or simplex, is obviously another matter, but... Nope. Nope. Three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Actually, I need to bring it directly like this. Total shutdown. So, I'll leave this as a, a brain teaser for you. See if you can figure it out. What's going on? I said the the chassis is aluminum. The flywheel is brass. The center axle is stainless. So there are no ferromagnetic parts to this uh, gyroscope. As obviously stated, all atoms are polarized. All atoms in their inner atomic volume are necessitatively. Inner, inner atomic volume is magnetodielectricity, so what is a magnet and what is magnetism in denotational difference? Polarized or polarized and coherent. And what we understand about magnetic reciprocation, centripetal convergence, centrifugal divergence, what is occurring? What are the torsional force vectors being affected on? Ultimately, the only thing that's being affected is not the axle. Uh, not the axle or the chassis, obviously, which is aluminum. Well, everything's being affected, obviously, but what's uh, slowing down the brass flywheel? Which, of course, we know brass is partially copper, so... That's maybe a hint, but... Why will the gyroscope spin here, as it would, completely away from this magnet, at the centripetal point, perpendicular to... I mean, uh, parallel to uh, the point of a centripetal convergence, you know, two, three minutes. Why will it spin if I were able to hold it perfectly here, which, you know, holding it is good enough. And why will it slow down in four to five seconds at the centrifugal edge? Remember, we got magnetic reciprocation occurring at the exact same angle of divergence as I was holding it here. So, what's occurring? Now what's going on? I see if you can figure it out, and... Uh, Maybe I'll send somebody a, uh, a reward. I'll have to think of something to give somebody. Access to something or something. Anyway, this little brain teaser. You think about magnetic reciprocation. That is, if you're interested in it, as all, in it at all. There are different types of puzzles in the world. and Somehow I think figuring out puzzles like this are more important for the human intellect than uh, figuring out crossword puzzles or playing games, since this has to do with uh, Mother Nature and the other stuff is unimportant, irrelevant nonsense. So, some brain teasers are more important and more relevant than others. So, thanks for watching.